Okay, in this video, I'm going to go through the start of every game from round 22. So the center bounce from every game. And you get a really good and clear understanding and a clear picture of how both sides set up against each other, what homework they've done during the week, who are the players to look out for, who should they man up, who should they go one-on-one, -on -one, who should they tag. So you get a really clear understanding from the first center bounce of the game what the strategy is in place. So I'm going to go through all those games from round 22 and give you a bit of an understanding of how they've set up to combat each other. So the first game is Sydney versus Collingwood. So I've got, this is Nick Dacos here, and then I've got Row Bottom here. I reckon when they went into this game, I reckon they thought that Grundy's going, he's had a really good year. They know Grundy, they know him in and out. So I reckon they were pretty defensive to start with. So that's Warner there. He likes, as a sweeper, he's been really good this year. He loves to stay back and give himself space. But you can see with his first centre bounce come in, Robottom's work on Penderbury is really important. And because Grundy's facing this way and being a right-hander, is the hence the reason why they've set up this way. No one's on... Or behind the rucks in this in this certain in this play, only the wingers coming off. So when this unfolds, you can see Row Bottom now about to do his work. He's about to push off Pendlebury and get into the position as a blocker, but get into position as a as a receiver. Look what Nick Dacos has done. He's taken off. And what he's done with this is created an urgency from Warner. These two here on the line, it's just a one-on-one -on -one battle. But the movement is happening with the blocker and the sweeper for Sydney. So as this as this pans out, you can see that that's where the, that's where the hit was going to be. And when you go back, Nick Dacos gets in a position here to possibly receive if he's rough, Darcy wins the tap. But he can, in an instant, can see that Grundy's going to win it. And then he folds off, but it's too late and Row Bottom gets it. So interesting strategy there. Felt like Colin was more defensive to start with. So interesting to see how, you know, how that rolled out. In this situation, so Briggs didn't play. So this is key from the ruck. Really interesting that Bedford went as a tag with Lockie Neal. So they knew Brisbane would have assumed that that's going to happen. So what they tend to do in this situation, if there's going to be tagging, and most teams do this, is get them to be the sweeper. So at least the ball doesn't get out, you know, front of centre in this situation. Um, so that's what they try and tend to do. But because the Giants were going in with, without Briggs, who's been there all year, Take particular notice of these two players here in Kelly and 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 Green because what they try and do they try and protect Big O hitting it forward and so they try and protect out the front so the ball goes up or ball's bounced you can see Lockie Neal's going into the sweeper's position because he's got a man on him so trying to protect that's you know if the ball goes hit goes forward, but watch here the work rate of Kelly and Green. They're trying to protect this hit that goes forward that allows McCluggage and the other Brisbane player to get on the fly and get moving and go forward. So that's, that's Dunkley there and McCluggage. You can see, look at Kelly and look at Green, really trying to protect that hit forward. And guess who gets on it first? Green. So, on to the next game. This is North versus the Eagles. So, a really interesting setup here. Obviously, Sherry's been in really good, really good form all year. Started with preseason, pretty much, but he's been really good. He's consistent. His second and third efforts great. Tackling pressure's been uh, really outstanding. But watch, Kelly takes a really aggressive role on LDU here. 
Eagles have done their homework, realised that he is he is their go-to player. So they stick Kelly on him. I think Reed does, Reed does a really good job here on Simpkin just to body him up. But when they come in, you can see that what's the work rate of the North player here? You can see that the, the what they're trying to do is they're trying to hit in this position here. They're trying to hit it back. So North gone into this knowing that Sherry's in good is in good form. No disrespect to the Eagles player, and I think they probably have this mindset. Whoever Sherry comes up against, the mindset is that we're going to win most of the hits. Let's try and hit it back, and you can see the work right here straight away. Simpkin needed to be in front of Harley Reid, but I think Harley Reid does a really good job. But then you watch the work rate of Kelly on LDU. LDU is coming is going to come into this position as well to help out, but if, don't get Sherry doesn't get the hit, but you can see the strong one on one. So that was a strong target for the Eagles to go after LDU. And the body work here from Reed was really, really good. Ends up being a free kick, the West Coast player, but you can see the strategy they had set up for that game. Right, so on to Freo versus Geelong. You've got, uh, I think Sean Darcy was laid out, so Luke Jackson goes into the ruck. And so that changed the mindset of Geelong in a way because then you're going from someone who's a left-hander to someone now who's a right-hander. So as we, as we um, Dangerfield goes straight to Sarong. So Sarong's been in awesome form. So that's a good match up there. And Young, I love Young as the blocker. The reason why I like Young as a blocker is he bodies up really, really well, but he's so explosive to get on the front side. I reckon the play here was, from Frio's perspective, was for Young to hold, and this is the space they wanted Luke Jackson to hit into. And the reason why I say that is because he comes from this angle. Very important to keep in mind. And he actually, I think, tries to hit with his left hand. Yeah, he's actually right-handed, but he tries to hit with his left hand as you can see in this position here. So, Sarong matching up, and I reckon what they wanted to try and do, from Freo's perspective, is hit it in this area, so Young could jump, get onto it, and use his pace. But as it unfolds, one-on-one, one-on-one, and in this situation, similar to Brisbane, I reckon Freo, Geelong love to hit it forward, and they've been doing it a lot all year. Sometimes they hit, they drop it back, but predominantly they've been trying to hit it forward. So their homework was, we don't want to get their play, we don't want to have their place, particularly Dangerfield, on goal side. So they're on goal side there, both the Freo players hold their hold their form really, really well and protect that ball going out the front of the stoppage. So really interesting how that dynamic set up be interesting to know, and we will never know, but what, you know, the, with the laid out with Darcy, if that sort of changed the mindset of the Geelong mids. But they they get there and, and hunt the footy and Luke Jackson ends up winning it. Okay, next game. Essendon versus the Suns. Now, in this situation, you have a right-handed ruck and you have a left-handed ruck. So the, way, the reason why these players are set up on this side is because... Right-hander hits that way. Left-hander hits the same way. So in this situation, it's that's hence the reason why you see those players set up on this side of the circle. So obviously Essendon's going this way and Suns are going that way. Raul has been used as predominantly the, the go-to and so is Noah Anderson. And so Noah Anderson matched up with Merritt here. So in this situation, Merritt is become. I would have liked to see Merritt come back a little bit and give himself a bit of space to come at the ball because as you'll see here, definitely it was definitely what they were trying to put in place one on one here with Corbell on. That was Corbell's job. I think was to go after Rao. 
to really match up against him. But the hit was definitely towards towards Merritt. Great reading there from Rao, anticipation of that. But certainly Merritt was coming into it. Would have liked him to have a bit more space just to break his... Because Noah's right on his right on his hammer there. If he gave himself a bit more space, would have allowed him to... Um, to 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 get a bit more space, a bit more separation on him. Good one on one here. So protecting uh, the ball from uh, with the Essendon player, protecting the ball from going at the front side, and Noah Anderson on the other side. So certainly the hit hit to target was Merritt, and then it was Shark really well, and and Rao got his body in the way. You can see with the setup that both the rocks have, and in relation to. Um, where the hit areas. Now, this is Melbourne versus Port. I reckon Port went into this thinking that uh, the Gorn is going to win majority of the hits. And so they used Cozzy a lot. And I reckon what they should have done is they should have brought Butters to stand on Cozzy pace on pace. They have wines in this situation. So... The strategy here was for Rivers to stay back, hold his space, so they can have space to hit into, cause you to wrap around, go this way, and Ollie Wines was on him. So I would have preferred if Butters, and then you watch uh, Viney, it's just body up and not allow the opponent to come into this space. So as it unfolds, you can see the body work of Viney here. Trying to hold, hold, hold. Because he's gone already. He's caught Ollie Wines uh, ball watching. And then just a little dinky tap into there. And Butters is able to come off, but it's too late. So in in this instance, I would have preferred, if I was the midfield coach, that Butters swaps with Ollie Wines. Bigger body Ollie Wines on someone who's... Who st- Rivers plays uh, the sweeper role really, really well, so it would have worked out well, but they missed the opportunity there. Okay, so Hawthorne versus Carlton. Meek's been in great form, as we all know, been hitting to really good spots, and he's been changing the variety. Pitnet, just these are just too old, too big, not not old, but too big uh, rucks that just were. Um, going against each other, old style ruck with a body up at centre bounces and so on and so forth. Crip, Cripper has been the go to guy for Carlton, so they sat Will Day on him. You got Warple here as a sweeper, and I think this, uh, I have to go with. Uh, so, what they were trying to do here in this situation, Meek likes to hit in different areas, and in this situation, you can see a little bit of a gap here. So they identified that this was going to be uh, the the position that they wanted to hit to. So just in that space there behind, you can see the Hawthorne player working really hard here. Day is working really hard one-on-one with Cripper, and then Warple's just trying to push his man under so he can get that separation and come out the back here. So as it unfolds, you see Cripper coming in. They love this little hit here. Along the line, Pitnet just drops it back. That's one area they love to hit. But Meek ends up winning it, and you can see he's trying to tap it into this area here. And look at the work rate of Warple. He's trying to get separation from his man. Already got separation, and away he goes. So trying to get into that area. So it was a really good setup. You can see with Carlton, they love to use Cripper. Big body, six foot five, gets in a really good area. So if they had dropped it back, he was in a good space, but really good effort there by the Hawthorne player to get in the way and then get onto the ball. Right, so this was the Saints versus Richmond. And really interesting to see that... um, that we've got Nan Kervis is a left-hander, and you've got um, you've got yeah le- left-hander, and then you've got 
Marshall is a right-hander. So hence the reason why the players are set up in this way. So if, if Nan Kervis wins it, it's going to here as a left-hander. If Marshall wins it, he's hitting it here as a right-hander. So that's why you see that they're a little bit off off center. They're not actually facing that way. So as it go, as it pans out here, this is a really interesting setup. What they try to do, Nan Curvis try to actually hit it in this area here. So we have one on one here. We have one on one here. But take note of this winger. So you've got a winger here. For the Saints, but look what this winger does for Richmond. Very interesting. Haven't seen a lot of that this year. Mainly the wingers stand side by side, but this is obviously a obviously a, a tactic of theirs. This is Taranto, so he's in the blocker position. If this come off, it would have been a really good set play. But he bodies up against his man Taranto here, and what he's trying, what they're trying to do is they're trying to hit it in this space here. For Taranto to come into the ball, and because Richmond's going this way, use the winger as the receiver because he's facing his goals. Doesn't come off, but this is definitely the play they had set up to start with. And Prestia's job is to try and press, push Jones, his opponent, under the ball, but away from where this space is. So as this unfolds, you can see the body work there. There's definitely body work there. And then Taranto is already pushed off and he's ready to go. And then look at the winger. Winger's coming back as a receiver. So if if Nan Curvis, you can see he's trying to hit it in that area. If he wins that tap, they're onto it straight away. Presti's done his work. Receiver's about to receive from the wing and Taranto. But he gets there late. The ball actually bounces up and Marshall just boots it out of there. But you can see... How they were trying to set up that stop plot, that the center bounce from Richmond. I quite like that, getting the winger involved, especially if the hit is going to be on that side of where the winger is. You get them involved, whether it's a defensive side or whether it's a, as a defensive, um, someone to come in as defensively or come in, in this case, offensively. Right, and then the last game. This is quite interesting. I did a video about this during the week, with Adelaide versus uh, the Western Western Bulldogs. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tim English and loved last year when he was jumping into opponents. He would come close. He would he would change up his angles this year and mention whether he's got a leg injury, so on and so forth. But this is the very first centre bounce, and this is really handy for O'Brien. O'Brien loves to body up, and he loves when the guys come really close to the line because it makes it a stop play. But in this situation, they, uh, Adelaide certainly were targeting the bond. He was the one that they wanted to make sure. You see in this situation here, the Adelaide player is not even looking at where the ball is in the air. He's focusing on the bond. Um, Trelaw steps away from Crouch in this situation and folds back to become the sweeper and Libba is on Rankin. Rankin actually ends up winning this but O'Brien loves to hit, like he can hit it forward but he, his favourite hit is to come back a little bit but you can see that the focus was on the Bont. In my, in my opinion I would have liked Bont to be here because he's big, he could man up against Rankin but also if the ball was to hit forward, Bont's very clever and can get onto it and use his pace. But it doesn't, it doesn't fold that way. Rankin ends up winning it. But you can see the mindset was to make sure they have coverage here. And Adelaide mindset was to make sure that they try and negate the Bont in the centre bounce. Look at that. Very, very one-on-one -on -one mindset. So I would have switched. I don't know if they switched it, but this is just a, obviously just the first centre bounce of the game. Chalor going into the... And then would have liked to see Crouch come a little bit this way. That's a very hard tap for O'Brien, even though he's a good palm of the footy, just to come a bit more towards Rankin. But it ends up being not a bad tap and Rankin gets it out. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed 
that description. You take a lot. I I myself look at all the start uh, center bounces at the start of the game to see the homework of both sides when they're going against each other. 